Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Omaha. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Hall of Famer Ben Stark and we are underway in the finals. We have made it all the way down to two. We had over 1,100 players in the tournament and somehow, some way, there's no treasure cruises to be seen here in the finals. We've got Steven Speck with Amulet Bloom, a super interesting and pretty complex combo deck playing against Eric Peters with Again, with, with, he's playing with what has to be sort of the staple deck. There was two main decks here. Obzon Pod is one of them. That's what Eric's got. And there was Blue Red Delver, uh, which didn't make it to the finals. No, I, it did put two copies in, in the top eight. We saw Pascal Manor just lose in the semis and Stefan Barrios lose in the quarters. Right. So a perfect start here from Eric. He's got an untapped land into a mana creature, this time Noble Hire. Passes a turn back to Steven, who's got... A City of Brass, card you don't see too often, but in the in the decks that just don't care about life and, and are more concerned with color, you'll see uh, cards like City of Brass. And uh, he's going to play Serum Visions. I do see an Amulet of Vigor in his hand here, too. Yeah, he has a lot of the combo pieces. He doesn't have Hive Mind or Primeval Titan. One way that he can uh, get things going is sometimes to transmute it to Lario West for a uh, Summoner's Pact and then go and find Primeval Titan. Looking at his hand, though, I don't think it actually makes a ton of mana either. I think he's got Amulet, Summer Bloom, Azusa, but I don't think he can actually make that much mana because he doesn't have those bounce lands. Oh, no bounce lands. Wow. Now, he did just resolve Serum Visions. So, you know, he could have set up the top of his library there. I didn't see if he put on top or bottom. But again, the perfect start here for Eric Peters continues as he's got the turn two birthing pod to start going off. So let's see what he can find. I mean, I only see a forest, a couple of amulets, a summer bloom. I mean, you can't combo off with a hand like this. No. Pair of amulets. So he's ready to go, but he's going to need more than this. Also, that's the only basic in his whole deck, that forest. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate draw for him this game. If uh, you change one of those amulets into a bounce land, I think this is a pretty good hand. He would still need Hive Mind or uh, Primeval Titan. Oh no. Well, that's actually not that bad. So Reclamation Sage comes down here for Eric Peters, but it's not just going to destroy one of the amulets of Vigor, it's also going to get potted away here. And, you know, he can go get something like Seed Rhino. Yeah, his, and just start getting his beat down on. Yeah, his fours actually aren't that effective in this matchup. What does he have? Siege Rhino, Murderous Red Cap, um, Restoration Angel, and Linvala. Basically, I think he might just get Murderous Red Cap, just so when he pods that away next turn, he keeps something. He mm. could get Siege Rhino because it's a lot bigger, and it'll deal three damage, whereas the Red Cap would only deal two. It's a pretty which one of those you get here. He could have the Red Cap in his hand, which so that might not even be an option. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he gets to attack with the Siege Rhino before he pods it away. So, so this does do more damage. This, this does seven. This does seven, whereas if he got a red cap, that would only do four. But then he would keep the, he would get another one immediately when he potted it away. So it's basically five. Right. And then he keeps the one one. So basically, you're gaining three life and doing two more damage immediately this way. And the other way, you're keeping a one one. Yeah, so for the long-term game plans, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more short-sighted. But you can see that Eric... He wants to put the heat down on Steven. Steven is generally what we call a goldfish deck. He's not going to interact with you much at all, if at all, especially in game one. So Steven Speck is really just trying to do what he's trying to do and go off. So Eric is trying to just put the pedal to the metal and get him here. <laughs> Third Amulet of Vigor, not what Steven wants to see. Now, you're seeing part of the downside to playing a deck like Amulet Bloom. And part of the reason I'm surprised to see it here, honestly, is that it is not a particularly consistent deck. It, no. It, can draw like this like three combo pieces of the same and then just have nowhere to go i mean he's two things short he needs yeah. to find a bounce land and he needs to find something to ramp into now, this deck gets some draws where you're it's basically not going to lose but it is an extremely high variance deck yeah. it's a good deck you know its win percentage might be there we saw it have a pretty strong showing this weekend with a couple other players towards the top of the standings deep into day two with it we did but it's definitely not the most consistent deck out there by comparison, this pod deck is one of the most consistent decks out there. Games where it doesn't draw pod, it still has great value creatures. Um, Kitchen Fink, Siege Rhino, Voice of Resurgence, uh, backed up by Mana Acceleration, Birds and Noble Hierarch, Wall of Roots. I mean, this deck, is, and then when it does draw pod, it just exploits and exploits and exploits these creatures with comes into play abilities, leaves play abilities, comes back into play when they die abilities like Persist and Undying and things of that nature. This deck is extremely consistent. It, it plays very similar games almost every game. Right. 
and right now, I mean, Eric Eric Peters is putting serious heat on. He's threatening an attack for eight next turn. Steven Speck at ten. He his life total is under siege, as another Rhino would finish him off here. So. <clears throat> Steven's got a lot of work to do and doesn't really seem to have the tools to do it. What has he drawn? He drew nothing? What just happened there? Well, um, I think... The, the ooze eats two creatures. He attacks for eight. He had a Gavany Township. He had a Township. That would be exactly ten if he had enough mana to activate it. Yeah, I think he had exactly five. I think he would have to tap the Hierarch if he didn't have a land to play from his hand. Uh -huh. But if he had enough green on tap to use the ooze uh, before on tapping, right. so that he could have all of his mana to use his Township, then, then he did have ten. Okay. Yeah. Well, he must have counted it up, and that was it. So a quick game one goes to Eric Peters. He didn't do anything special. He did have the turn one mana accelerator, which let him stay, you know, pretty consistently ahead of the curve. But, uh, yeah, just Siege Rhino ran him over there. Yeah, that wasn't a great draw for the Amulet deck. And, uh, you know, taking a look at the sideboard, um, you know, the pod player has to be really happy to win game one. Oh, yeah? Because... The Amulet doesn't really sideboard against Pod. I mean, it's got some Chalice of the Voids for Delver. It's got some Pyroclasms for really fast decks. Seal of Primordium. Uh, that could kill Pod, but that's not really a great plan against them because they play value creatures anyway. And they right. get one use out of the Pod, even if you kill it. So I don't think that's really where you want to be. Slaughter Pack, which is pretty good against them. Maybe you'll bring it in, but it's more for decks like Splinter Twin, you know, where it can break up a creature-based combo. Thrag Tusk and Sigarda. Basically, no anti pod. There's just nothing, yeah. yeah. I mean, this, you wouldn't, like, if you're an Amulet Bloom deck and you could just play pod all day, you'd do it, right? Yes, I think pod is probably a, a pretty good matchup for them and not the kind of uh, deck they sideboard against because they're the type of deck that has what we call silver bullet sideboard cards. They're looking for powerful cards in specific matchups because their deck um, relies basically on the synergy between all the cards. So they, when they sideboard, it drastically hurts their main game plan. So they only want to take out cards if they're bringing in cards that are so powerful against these decks that they're bringing them in against that it doesn't matter if they weaken their main game plan, such as if you resolve a Chalice for one against Delver or if you Pyroclasm against an Affinity deck or something like that. By comparison, Eric Peters playing Birthing Pod, you know, his deck is consistent, you know, it's grindy, it's not, you know, you could take out any five cards from that deck except for Birthing, well, you could even take out Birthing Pods, but that would just hurt it a lot because it's one of the best cards in the deck. But you could take out any five cards from Birthing Pod and the deck would still function very similarly. It doesn't rely on given cards, especially if they were non-pod cards. So his sideboarding is going to help him here because he has four Thoughtsies. That's a straight up anti-combo card. You know, you take, if they have the hive mind in the pack, you can take one of them. If they have two copies of one, you, then they, they can't go off. You know, if they have two copies of one and one copy of another, you take the one that they only have one of. It's very disruptive to these combo decks that need to string together multiple things. Thoughtseize is excellent against combo. He's also got um, Entumor Exarch, basically just another discard. Another Thoughtseize. Yeah. Um, Chalice, I don't think is good in this matchup. Um, Choke's not good. Creeping Corrosion isn't good. I mean, it could kill Amulet, but that, that's for Affinity. I mean, that's a lot of mana to kill just an Amulet that they might have already went off with. It feels like when they play the Amulet, it's too late. Agreed, agreed. So, yeah, I think he's going to bring in these four Thoughtseizes and the one in Tumor Exarch. And I think that's, uh, you know, really powerful. Like, I think that this uh, Amulet deck is very good, but it's highly fragile. And uh, if you thought sees it once, maybe twice, that could definitely be the difference between them doing virtually nothing and them killing you on turn four. And he'll probably take out some of his slower stuff, some of his stuff that's more um, value oriented. I mean, Linvala, I don't think does a whole lot in this matchup. Um, Dark Blast, obviously not really a card in this matchup. Um, no. I mean, Murderous Cut kills Primeval Titan, so maybe it's okay. Shriek Maw is not a great card in this matchup. You don't want to kill the Primeval Titan on your turn. Right. All right, well, Amulet, uh, Steven Speck with his Amulet deck gets to be on the play here, though. And I've got to imagine that that's going to be a pretty big upside for him. You know, it looks like he has a pretty good hand. Uh, he's got the Summer Bloom. I think I see, saw uh, a hive mind here. I'm not 100%. Yeah, there's one in the there back of his hand. There is a hive mind, yeah. yep. Interestingly, though, he has Chalice in his hand, it looks like. He does. I wasn't expecting that. Um, there's a lot of varied casting costs in the Birthing Pod deck. I didn't think that was a deck you'd want to bring Chalice of the Void in against. I mean, I, I'm assuming that his idea is to put it on Chalice for one to, to blank Birds of Paradise and such, but that just 
Doesn't seem like a great plan. It's not a great plan because they've already had an opportunity on their turn one to cast their Birds of Paradise. Right. They even sideboard two Chalice of the Voids themselves. Yeah, so that can't be good if they're if you're both doing it, somebody's doing it wrong. All right, here it is though. Amulet of Vigor, namesake for the deck. He even has a Gruel Turf in his hand there, and he's got a land drop to spare here too. So this is a much better hand than last game. Right. He's gonna bounce his own land back, pay two mana, and there it is, Chalice for one. Well, while I don't love the card as a sideboard card for this matchup, it is the right play to do what he just did here. Uh-huh. Um, he's going to lock out Thoughtseize, and they have each other's deck lists. So, I mean... Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have anything in his deck that he's stopping, really, and he j I guess Serum Visions, but not a whole lot. And he's already played one of those and right. the Amulet. And he's stopping, you know, four birds, two Hierarch, four Thoughtseize, and the four Thoughtseize there being the big thing. Yeah, that's the big thing, because it's interesting, though... Eric had access to all of those cards and just didn't play them on turn one. It's right. Hard you to imagine that he has it. Would he hold a thought? No, he wouldn't. You almost, you almost certainly assume he doesn't have a thought season in his hand, but Stefan having most of the combo in his hand, he's um, looking to prevent Eric from even drawing thought seizes because if he can't be thought seized, um, it's going to be hard for Eric to kill him before he can assemble his combo. Sure. All right. I think we're going to see. Oh, Abrupt Decay to kill a combo piece here with the Amulet, and there's not going to be a replacement one of those anytime soon either. Steven has Summer Bloom, gets to play two lands, and then the third land there, and gain a life, lose a life, so... Okay, I mean, he's going to untap with six mana. And so the interesting thing is, he has a Hive Mind for next turn, but the Pact he has in his hand is Pact of Negation. So you actually need a target for that. Right. <laughs> That's awkward. This has gone pretty well, though, for Steven, all things considered. So far, Eric hasn't done much. Wall of Roots on turn three is, is the big payoff here. What else does he have? Well, Voice of Resurgence. Still, uh, effectively a bear in this spot. Oops, <laughs> there's another amulet off well, the top for him. That's actually um, a pretty good draw for him. How come? Well, I think... I think on the following turn, he can cast it and then maybe pact it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> which would then give Eric a combo, uh, a, a copy of a Pact of Negation. Which he definitely can't pay for. Right. Especially with no Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarchs available. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, and if this works like that, which is how I think it does work, it's pretty funny even because the Chalice would counter the Amulet at this it point. It would anyway, but... But it should still work because I think he can tap the one, play the Amulet, with the Chalice ability on the stack. Totally. Pact of Negation, his own Amulet, and then the hive mind will make a copy of Pact of Negation for Eric. He can counter whatever he wants. It, it, it doesn't matter because it can't counter itself. Right. And then he has to untap, pay five, including two blue, which he does not have. And or lose game. the game. Yeah. So Eric has a one-turn window to get rid of that hive mind here. Yeah, but, but he if might he be able to. Puts anything on the stack. It looks like he's going to be able to because he has birthing pod. So he can go get reclamation sage. <laughs> it's pretty funny. If if uh. Now what what happens if Steven counters the birthing pod there? He can't pay for it himself. His own pact. No, if he had double blue. He could have. That would be a, a oh, really nice play. Brutal. Yeah, but he only had one blue mana, the mana confluence, so he couldn't actually make that play or he would die during his upkeep. So if either of those bounce lands were Simic Growth Chamber, the one that he has four of, he could have won the game there. That's pretty incredible, right? What, yeah. what a way to win if he uh, packed of negations there, oh. untaps, pays the five, and then passes back. Oop. Actually, well, would the copy of Pact be able to then counter his Pact? I'm not sure. Sure. It can't copy itself, so you have to pay for it. You end up having to pay for it. But if he had played Pact of Negation there on the birthing pod, it's possible that the hive-minded copy would, would then have been used to counter the original Pact of Negation. So the pod would still resolve. He would go fetch up. Um, but it would be too late because his opponent had still played a Pact of Negation, right? Oh, right. So he could kill the hive mind, but he would still but lose still on his next upkeep. Yeah. yeah. As is now, though, this game is kind of, you is know... It, this is getting out of control yeah. here, and Eric Peters is really making a move here to become our champion. It all looks so good for Steven, and uh, all of a sudden, he's way behind. He's in hardcast Cinnamon Spirit Guide mode, and that is not going to get the job done here. What are the type of outs that Steven can find here? Another hive mind? I'm not even sure if he realistically has outs. He can cast a Primeval Titan. 
It's without, pretty good here. Yeah, without an amulet Ooh. in play, though, it's not like he's going to be able to give it haste or anything. Right, and here is the Exarch. And he just has to show him an amulet and the pact, so Eric can just take the pact away and mean that Steven Speck has effectively a zero card hand here. He just, the amulet just gets countered, doesn't do anything. Yeah, if Steven would have held that spirit guide, he might have had the opportunity to draw exactly a uh, hive mind, cast it, use the spirit guide for a mana, cast the amulet, and then pack his own amulet. Yeah. Uh, after playing it, I'm not sure that he had any outs, but that would have required him top decking exactly hive mind exactly this turn also anyway. Right. So it seems like it's a pretty unlikely scenario for Steven Speck right now. If he even gets one more turn, he's going to need to draw something pretty spicy right here. That is, is that a Primeval Titan? I think it's a Teleria West, maybe? Oh, it's a Teleria West. I think you're right. Now, Teleria West, yeah, w with some time, could get him another pack, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think that, I think we're going to have our champion, Eric Peters, here very shortly. Steven Speck's at 13. He's not taking 13 this turn, but he's seen enough, and Eric Peters is our champion very calmly. Finishing off Steven Speck with his Amulet Bloom deck and uh, Obzon Pod still on top in Modern. Yeah, and you know, Pod can be disru deceptively disruptive. I mean, it's got those creatures. Um, like we saw, he, uh, he searched out the Reclamation Sage for the win. And with the Birthing Pods, it's not like he has one copy of Reclamation Sage. It's like he has five. Because he didn't actually draw the Reclamation Sage itself. He drew no. Birthing Pod and used it to uh, search out a Reclamation Sage, killing the hive mind and effectively winning the game. And effectively winning the game right there. So Birthing Pod still on top in Modern, and you can see why it won him that game. Probably won him a whole bunch of games over the course of the weekend.